Hey, Damon DeMarco here for createx3.com and today I'm going to be profiling a new typewriter that I just finished restoring. It is a 1935 Remington Rand Model 1 typewriter. If you want to see how I did that restoration, you could check out my six-part video restoring a Remington Rand 1930s Model 1 typewriter. You can see that this is a very sleek looking and very business-like machine. Remington Rand Model 1 typewriters were made between 1933 and 1941. About 95,000 of these typewriters were made with an additional 8,700 or so that did not have the tabulator function. They retailed for approximately $65, or if you bought it without the tabulator, it would be about $62.50 or $60. It depends on the ad that you saw, apparently. Remember, this is almost 90 years ago. A lot of typewriters in those days were sold on installments because $60 was a large purchase for a lot of people. Remington Rand marketed this particular group of typewriters as, quote, without question, the finest standard portable ever built. They weren't biased in the least. Evidently, they were targeting this particular typewriter to writers, and teachers and business people, people who spent a lot of time generating documents back in the day. They called this typewriter the noisy, noiseless machine, and you'll see why in just a second. Turns out it was so quiet that they had instances of people who got frustrated. They literally kept hammering the keys again and again and again because they didn't feel like they were working hard enough. <laughs> That's hilarious to me. In fact, in 1932, a patent that was secured by James H. Rand of the Remington Rand Company said this, quote, In the operation of noiseless typewriting machines, there is a pronounced psychological effect on some operators, especially those who have previously operated noisy machines. This is due to the fact that in operating a noiseless machine, the operator hears no noise, and the touch on such machines is usually much lighter than on noisy machines. Therefore, the operator has the mental attitude that she, incredibly sexist that, but that's what it was back in the day, is not writing or obtaining any result from the operation of the keys, or that she is not attaining her usual speed, due almost wholly to the entire absence of the usual clatter to which she is accustomed. It is difficult in some instances to overcome this purely mental attitude, he goes on to write, or to convince the operator that she is in fact at possibly even greater speeds than she ordinarily attains on a noisy machine, and with the expenditure of less effort. I find this machine to be incredibly quiet and incredibly fast, so I think that Remington Rand lived up to its uh, marketing and its design, but let's take a better look at it so that you see for yourself. A few things to observe here. This machine is one of the 95,000 or so that had the tabulator key. The tab settings are right here behind this cover. When you flip this over, you can see this little metal doodad here. Now this machine probably came with, I would suspect, about 10 of these. Over the years, they've been lost, and when I got this machine, it only had one left. You could probably make a few more of these out of sheet metal. Also, you can see that your left and right margin settings are right back here on this rack. Your line spacing mechanism is right here. When it's set all the way forward, it's set to one. There's a setting for two and a setting for three. It goes all the way down. When you hit three, you can watch this claw digs into the sprocket here and you can listen. There. It goes up three times. This claw spacing mechanism is actually very, very simple, and it's actually quite easy to put back together because it fell apart when I was changing the platen. And sometimes when your line spacing mechanism falls apart, you're like, Ugh. But uh, this time, not so terrible. This machine, underneath these ribbon caps, which pop right off, has these very unusual donut-shaped spools. And you can see them in part one of my video series on how I restored this machine. It's worthwhile mentioning that if you're confused about spools at all, we've all been there. Check out my primer on typewriter ribbons and spools, which is That's another video that I've done. I'll put a link to it right up uh, right here. As a matter of fact, do you see that? 
Overall, this is not a very difficult machine to, it looks difficult and daunting, but it's really not that hard to change these spools at all. They, uh, they function in the same way as other spools do. If you're picking one of these machines up online, make sure that it comes with uh, spools, otherwise you're gonna have a real problem. One very interesting thing about this model is that to change the ribbon manually, you do so from the side by pressing in this button. When you press it from the right-hand side, it pops out onto the left-hand side. That manually reverses the ribbon, so when it snags at one end because you've run through the ribbon, you just hit those buttons again, and it will reverse the direction of the ribbon wind so that you can uh, just keep typing. What else? Well, you've got your color selector here, your margin release for when you get to the end of a line and you want to keep typing. Backspace button clearly marked here. Shift lock and shift key. I wouldn't push down on the shift lock. What I would do is hit the shift key and then do that. And that's a little bit different than some more modern machines where you just hit the shift lock and it'll hold down on its own. When you're finished, you just hit the shift key, it releases the shift lock, and you can move back up. One thing you should definitely be aware of is that this is a carriage shift machine. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Take a look right here. When you hit the shift key, it moves the entire carriage up and down like that. I think of this as a more traditional way for typewriters to be built. Later on, many machines move to what is called a basket or segment shift mechanism. Here's another interesting feature that uh, I learned about uh, accidentally while I was exploring this typewriter. Take a look at how the carriage locks into place. Most typewriters have a carriage lock mechanism on them so that when you're transporting them, the carriage doesn't move around a lot. Take a look at this one. This little lever right here, you can see me pushing it down, has a claw indentation right here. As the carriage moves over, it was meant to lock right on that lever right there, do you see? But for some reason, I could not figure out how to get that thing in place. And then I did. I knew that this lever right here pushed down so that this piece right here was meant to engage with that cleft in this bar, but it wouldn't. I've since learned that this is a relatively common feature for Remington Rand typewriters. What you do is pull out the right hand platen knob. See that? Push the lever down and lock it into place. Now, as the carriage moves into the center line position, The carriage is locked. To remove that, you have to pull the knob back out. Now the carriage is free to move again. Pretty ingenious overall. The final thing that I was looking at that didn't seem to make sense to me is that when you snap a, a key, you can see that the hammers don't actually come out and touch the platen. Instead, what they do is they hover there kind of with a, a distance of, I don't know, like a half inch or something between the type slug and the platen. Well, that's unusual. The type slug has to hit the platen if it's going to make any kind of imprint whatsoever, correct? Here you can see, as I was trying out my first post-restoration type samples, everything was coming out very, very faint. So faint, frankly, that I got very, very frustrated. I actually considered flipping the machine over. There must be some kind of an adjustment screw, I thought. A reason why the type hammers are not extending all the way to hit the platen. But then I went online and I talked to somebody on Reddit and they said, no, 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 I have that typewriter. It was engineered to be the noisy, noiseless machine. It was engineered to be silent, which means that the uh, type hammers barely smack the platen. They kind of go Beep. They shoot forward, they make their imprint, and then they come back. That's why it doesn't make a lot of noise. And his suggestion was to use a lot of backing sheets. Now, typically I use at least one backing sheet, sometimes two with my typewriters. But in this case, it turns out that I had to use four before the typewriter was stamping properly. This particular Reddit user was also saying that maybe you could switch to a cotton ribbon rather than the synthetic weave that they use these days. Apparently the cotton ribbon is thicker and so it would facilitate better imprint onto the paper. It turns out that did the trick perfectly. So now without any further ado, you should see this thing type.
I take one clean sheet of paper. I take four backing sheets. These can be old pieces of scrap paper, anything basically. Take the piece of paper, apply it here, square them up nicely, load. One thing I'm noticing with this machine is that, as I find with a lot of older typewriters, like 1920s and 1930s, I use the carriage return lever to kind of move the carriage over and then give it a little jog at the end to do the spacing. It's got a very strong carriage return lever and it feels like that's what it's engineered to do. So that's what I do. It's not really a choice. It's just like, well, that's what it is. In fact, the shift, uh, the carriage shift on this one has this very interesting knob. I'm not even sure what this is for. I just don't use it. I mean, for me, the machine functions perfectly well without me having to use that little lever thing. One criticism that I have of this machine, and it's a criticism that I have for all machines that lack this particular feature, there are no paper stays. When your work comes out the back of the machine, it just kind of flops over this way. I don't particularly like that. Instead, I like to work on machines where it's been engineered that the page is going to go straight up. That way the page that flops over the back of the machine doesn't hit anything. It's not just you know, it's fumbling around all over the place. As the paper gets wound through, it stacks itself up very nicely. When you're finished, paper stays. So my overall analysis of this machine is that it is a fantastic tool. You can probably hear through the camera even, it is in fact very, very, very quiet. Uh, so I think that it does live up to its marketing hype. And I also think that it has that, they call it a speed typewriter. I think that it's very, very, very fast. You know, like when you're drinking wine, there's a mouthfeel, right? You know, you're driving a car, it's how it handles. Typewriters pretty much all have a mechanical feel to them that is very, very unique unto them. This machine has a profile that is incredibly fast, incredibly lightweight for something of its size. I mean, this is probably, um, I'm going to say a 15 pound machine, still technically a portable for the day. But even with that, it moves very, very fast and it is very, very lightweight. And as you can hear, it is incredibly quiet for uh, a full featured portable. So I think overall, it is a fantastic machine. I bought this from a, a guy who wanted to get rid of it and said, oh, it can't be fixed. Whatever. Everything can be fixed if you want to put the time into it. So I very much recommend the Remington Rand 1935 Model 1 to anyone watching this video. If you have any questions about it or if you have a Remington Rand Model 1 and you'd like to tell us about your experience with it, please put your comments in the thing down below. Talk to us. It's a community thing. People who get typewriters, there's, there's a few of us out there. You know who you are. And if you want to be part of that community, by all means, speak up, say hi, you know, check in. We'll talk, you know, talk to each other. But thank you very much for watching. I'm Damon DeMarco for createx3.com. And this has been a typewriter profile of a Remington Rand 19 1935 Model 1 typewriter. Stay happy, stay healthy, and stay creative.